So it's obvious that we are officially now in a correction and, and it's all about risk off right now. And tech, if you think about it, is really ground zero when it comes to risk in, in investors' portfolios. Nobody wants to own any of the high multiple, high valuation, high growth stocks right now. But I mean, this is when smart people who make smart decisions make money. And we're waiting right now for the opportunity to pounce on some names. I think there's a lot of good names out there on sale. The question is, when do you pull that trigger? And my take, Kelly, is the sell-off isn't going to stop until Apple hits its 200-day moving average in that 147 to 148 range. Hmm. The market's just not washed out yet. But you take a look at a, at a name like Microsoft. It's down almost 20% from its peak. Hybrid cloud is a thing of the future. It's trading below its 200-day moving average. I would buy more right now. Could it go lower? Absolutely, but I, I wouldn't be mad at myself if right. I bought some today. No, you'd be insane to try to bottom tick any of this. It's just once yep. it gets to a good price, there you go, if you think that's where it is. And it's real quickly as a follow-up, Mark, people have been talking about Apple as a tell. I remember, you know, even we were talking about with Mike Novogratz, he said, like, this is the, we hit $3 trillion. For whatever reason, Apple is becoming the stock to watch. Do so you think we're about $10 above the level where you'd want to buy it? I think so. I mean, I'd probably buy more at around 150, but I think the sell-off kind of starts to, to come to a conclusion right around that 147, 148 level. It is. It's kind of like the bellwether of the market right now. It's fascinating. All right, stay right there. Uh, as we talk tech, let's get specific about the semiconductors. The SMH is down 3% today, 15% for January now. Christina Parts and Evelis here with the latest. This one peaked back in November, Christina. Yeah, it did, but we're still, if we're talking about the uh, components, you're seeing carnage across the board today, especially in chips, applied materials, Micron, Qualcomm, LAM Research, all down about between about uh, zero or 1% and 3%. But NVIDIA is one of the biggest losers, having the third largest impact on the NASDAQ right now. It's tracking for its worst month since July 2008. And overall, it's about, uh, it's coming off those uh, lows uh, over 6% higher. And then you've got AMD Advanced Micro Devices. This is one of the NASDAQ's 100 biggest decliners to start the year, already 32% off its 52-week high and about 7% lower today or 6.5% lower today. Keep in mind, just last week, Piper Sandler analyst downgraded AMD warning of a slowdown in the PC market for 2022. And of course, the semis wouldn't be spared by the rising treasury yields environment. AMD's biggest competitor, though, Intel faring a little bit better. And the CEO, Pat Gensler, uh, is boastful. Earlier this month, he posted a video on LinkedIn stating his company's PC processors will never be beaten by AMD and that AMD is, quote, in the rear view mirror. If you compare both companies year to date, he might feel vindicated. Intel is only about, uh, yeah, 2% lower uh, this month, and then you've got uh, AMD down about 22%. And given the drop in its constitu constituents, we're going to come first full circle. The Vanex Semis ETF is also trending lower today. Kelly? Christina, thank you. Mark, what would you do with the chips? Um, look, I mean, chips are outperforming software. That's not saying a lot, though. Um, but when it comes to chips, I'm a long-term bull. We don't have enough chips in this world. We need better more advanced, more efficient chips so that we can do pretty much everything we want to do as a society. I own NVIDIA, I own AMD. I'm sticking with them. I'm not selling them. I, I'm not saying I would be buying more right here. Um, NVIDIA is still a bit extended, but it's back around its 200-day moving average. And they're in all those highest growth end markets, autonomous driving, AI, data center, gaming. Um, AMD obviously probably had quite a bit of pull forward during the pandemic in regards to their, their notebooks unit. But they're light years ahead of Intel technology-wise. So, look, those are both great companies. And I think as an investor, if you're confident that three to five years from today they're going to be higher, Kelly, as we already mentioned, you really can't pick the bottom. Right. You, know, you just got to right. know they're good names and, and be willing to buy them or hold them. Yeah, exactly. Mark, we appreciate it. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.